One of one of uh, many experiences here in Serbia, right? To add on. Yep. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the cup experience and the fans. Uh, we were expecting something worse. I thought that for sure somebody will go into fight. For sure there will be some fights with police. But except from one flare which was thrown from Partizan to Zvezda fans, except from all these, you know, coins, batteries and mm, paper sheets, lighters, which is innocent, completely oh, wow. innocent in okay. Serbia. Okay. I mean, it was pretty much a very good game, really very good game. There was also a moment in the second quarter when I was uh, in the media tribune, which is under the bel balcony uh, uh, of Partizan fans. I was just doing my job and suddenly, flag is coming at me but it's like it was like a curtain you know getting down and because you know partisan fans were putting this banner uh, on the balcony and like you can imagine that I'm watching the game like this and the flag the bottom of flag was like there so I couldn't watch I couldn't see anything so I was like watching the game like this because I've just heard stories that there were some journalists who were like more aggressive with that kind of approach trying to move the curtain away yeah. I don't know what they did but the End of the story is that few partisan fans jumped in in media tribune and let's say in a, how to say in a diplomatic way, uh, they just made sure that that journalist made the mistakes and you know, uh, he, he, was, he regretted and never do it again. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I was like, I'm okay, I'm gonna watch the final game through the curtain. I'm good, I'm good, no worries. Maybe that's the reason why there were like thousand or 2,000 policemen inside the arena, outside the arena, uh, trying to protect uh, everybody from violence or something. But generally speaking, I have to say that really, uh, after the game, before the game, we were kind of walking through the streets. Uh, it was dark. We were expecting something, but no, it was it was very good, very well controlled. And after the game, what was crazy, uh, it took like 30 minutes after the final whistle, where both teams were you know clapping for their fans. <laughs> like half an hour for partisan fans to leave uh, because again police escorted them out of the arena and they kept only Zvezda fans and players inside to celebrate because you know there's no celebrations they didn't uh, lift the trophy before partisan uh, fans uh, left so it was also very weird We were hearing all these stories about uh, fights in gas stations. You know, there's a highway from Nish uh, to Belgrade. It's like two or three hour uh, uh, drive uh, from Nish. And uh, fights, uh, gas stations were kind of, you know, uh, fighting ring uh, yeah, for all yeah, these fans yeah. before. So at least my colleagues from Serbia told that uh, they recommended to, you know, shut down all these gas stations uh, to protect from any potential violence. Uh, I was told also that sometimes some of the fans were waiting, uh, like making like a border patrol stuff and just checking if there are like three or four guys sitting in the car, they're gonna stop you and ask uh, what team do you support. But all these things is just a speculation. Answer. That's that's what people in Serbia they're saying. Other than that, I mean, for us, for us outsiders, it's very hard to understand it. But at the same time, in Serbia, it's, it's like the ever another day in the office, really. So for us, it's like, oh wow, what what the hell is that? I have joined the guys on Monday. Go, we went to the uh, arena for Serbian. Uh, national team training and we were supposed to get an interview with a uh, coach Pesic. Well that didn't really work out uh, so we just um, 
basically hung out in the arena for two hours, which was a waste of time in the end of the day. But we met a cat. Apparently, it's like a historic, very, very uh, big deal, uh, a part of the arena, and it's been living there forever. Uh, so that was pretty cute. Um, that's about it. Uh, from that day, oh, we went for an amazing dinner. <laughs> like um, some meat that we thought are gonna be like a you know decent platter we ended up getting like a platter for that probably like five or six uh, big men could have eaten off so uh, that was fun um, then on Tuesday I did have three and ones to film which according to the plan it was supposed to be Aaron White um, Kevin Punter and uh, Kuzmich Unfortunately, uh, Kuzmich's interview got cancelled, so acted really fast and uh, then got Nate Walters. Got questions and I went in and did an uh, interview with Nate, which was fun. Nate is such a cool guy as well. And uh, um, During the interviews, we stayed uh, in this restaurant that uh, Aaron uh, recommended. Apparently, Serbia, you're allowed to smoke everywhere. Incredible, because I'm not used to that anymore. Being inside in a restaurant, eating or filming as we were, and having someone to smoke right next to you. The places inside stink like of smoke, even though no one is smoking. Let alone like if there was someone smoking next to you, it's like, it, I mean, I had a headache for every every day. So we had so many interviews that I actually almost forgot, I mean, who we actually had on the list, but we had uh, Partizan GM Zoran Savic, uh, Svetislav Pesic, probably you, it's all, all these uh, funny stories. Uh, then we have exactly Day, yeah, you had Punter, White, I had Nikola Kalinic. I mean, it's like 10 persons. I think in, in like between us we days. have... It's crazy, wow. Yeah. Good coverage, well done.